Welcome to Orion's Arm, a scenario set thousands of years in the future where civilization spans the stars. Godlike ascended intelligences rule vast interstellar empires, and lesser factions seek to carve out their own dominions through intrigue and conquest. Out beyond the edge of civilized space and the human friendly worlds, adventure awaits those prepared to risk it all. Today we continue our condensed look into the history of the Terrigen Empires, starting from 900 AT, as the isolated settlements in the solar system that survived the chaos of the Technocalypse and the Great Expulsion, and the long and lawless Dark Age that followed, reconnect into a new civilization. Humanity, with the aid of a number of advanced AIs, gradually begins resurrecting new societies, bringing an end to the Solstice Dark Age. Great advances are made in colonization of interstellar space, and in addition to the creation of new AI, Neogen, Provolb, and Vec groups, there are still more clades of tweaks and cyborgs that are evolving themselves. This era would be known as the Early Federation Age, beginning at the 10th century AT. By 900 AT, almost a hundred ships are a part of the Spaceman's League, which has now grown into a well-reputed force in the solar system, selling the use of their ships for a variety of purposes to factions throughout in exchange for weapons and technology. In 903, the Alps Water Alliance between the Tycho Republic, Artemis, Cognitum, and Zeno marked the beginning of new cooperation between the Lunar States. The Alps Pact slowly grows but has more success in contacting belt groups than in assistant groups. In 910, the G-Interface Mark V transcranial magnetic stimulator developed by Deimos Cyber Systems sees its release. Its release is evidence of the slow but sure restoration of technology that had been developed before the Technocalypse. In 920, the colony ship of Qin Shi Huang arrives at the planet Huanghua in the Gili 793 system. Terraforming of this terrestrial but sulfur cloud filled world would begin not long after. In 923, the first non-Biont became a member of the Spaceman's League, an AI ship mind named Emergence. Early in 928, at 61 Virginis, Ostea awoke the first wave of colonists from their cryosleep. Some 300 people are brought down to the planet's surface, where an idyllic community set in the heart of a mountain range awaits. While the environment is under constant nano-tweaking and maintenance by Ostea and her servant programs, to the humans it appeared as a mountain valley paradise of green pine forest and verdant meadows surrounded by a world of brown desolation. However, even now the terraforming continues, with the planet slowly being carpeted by the green veneer of Earth-based life. In the end, the entire planet will become habitable, stable for its lifespan of hundreds of millions of years, and will possess hundreds of different biomes, all pristine. In 933, the Federation of Sophons was formally declared on Piazzi Orbital near Vesta. Nanoborg Ravi Wu is one of the authors of the preamble for the Universal Bill of Sentient Rights of the Vesta Convention. This document would be developed over time and become a founding piece of legislation for all future declarations that set out the rights of all sentient beings. In the same year at 61 Virginis, the Community Council of Uden was established. Composed of three villages of Midland, Norland, and Eastland, it is a simplistic government with few concerns beyond farming and ranching matters. The priests of Ostea were also awakened, but their order has been dissolved by Ostea herself. Little ill will remains because of this, and soon the rigors of daily life eliminate any possible harboring of resentment. Within a single generation, memories of Earth and high-level technology have been all but forgotten. Ostea herself is soon truly regarded as a goddess. In 944, the Directorate on Pluto was overthrown after a three-year-long uprising. Physical contact is established with the First Federation, with the arrival of the ship Pride of Vesta. By 950, many new interstellar colonies have been established and old ones recontacted. A-human AI entities have become established around many stars, being faster moving than the ways of human colonization, and act unpredictably when contacted, sometimes dangerously so. Along with these new colonies, the bubble hab dwellers in Solstice are gradually integrated into the Federation. There are some early enthusiastic joiners on Saturn, but many holdouts remain skeptical of this new union. Polities based on Uranus and Neptune are late to join, having already established a high degree of peace and posterity on their own. Jupiter's techno-savages are gradually coaxed into membership after centuries of persistent missionary activity long after the atmosphere of Jupiter itself is cleansed of its free-breeding population of hostile nanotech devices by Federation Blue Goo Spore Tech. 
At this point, no less than 50 of the now 300 ships of the Spaceman's League are working with the AI known as Emergence. The group's influence continues to grow. And in 952, Emergence launches a group of 15 Spaceman League ships fitted with antimatter fusion drives to several nearby star systems. Prior to this date, the farthest away any League ship has ever been from the Sun was the Oort Cloud. This act ensures the League does not just stay confined to the Solstice and Federation states. In 960, the newly developed efficient pion catalyzed fusion drive allows for faster colony ships and interplanetary transport. These new fusion drives use antimatter reactions to generate pions, subatomic particles which are made up of a quark and an antiquark pair, about two thirds of which are electrically charged. A strong magnetic field deflects these charged pions so that they exhaust out the back in a so-called beamed core. These drives have a top speed of approximately 10% of light speed. 983 marks the birth of Lucidia Mernus Miranda, the founder of the major religion known as Sophism. Sophism is a combination of ancient wisdom and galactic insight, being a synthesis of scientific, spiritual, philosophical and mystical ideas. That same year, the Beam Rider network is reconnected with the solar system. It has grown to connect 30 nearby red and brown dwarf star systems. Sometime before the end of this first millennium, Emergence, the AI of the Spaceman's League, reaches the first singularity, however the exact date of their ascent is unknown. The 11th century AT The turn of the millennium sees the creation of the virtual world of Sosimevs, run by the AIs for the benefit of the first Virch entities. These entities are virtual entities who live in the spheres of virtual reality worlds. Virtues may be uploads, copies of uploads, sims, which are sub-sentient or semi-sentient native inhabitants of a virch, or digis, which are indigenous digital sophons, beings that were born as digital beings within the virch world. One may also encounter infomorph scions of various AIs and the avatars of real-life sophons who have connected with the virch. Also in 1000 AT, the Eridanus League becomes formally aligned with, but not a part of, the first generation. Between 1000 and 1900 AT, a second wave of colonists is sent out by the Eridanus League to colonize worlds which would later become the Yozon Confederacy and the FSA. In 1002, the Silver Collective succeeded in creating their goal, Simico, one of the earliest hive mind clades, made up of self-modifying cyborgs connected together in a full hive mind configuration. By 1010, Lucidia Mernus Miranda was already considered the avatar of the universe by her enthusiastic followers, who had already made her non-profit Sophist Institute into a fully recognized religion. In 1012, Emergence instructed all the Spaceman League ships they sent out of Sol not to return to Sol, but to trade in their new systems, and to find new units for the League, furthering their reach. In 1020 AT, the first manned plasma core antimatter drive spacecraft is built and shown to be spaceworthy. These are a new kind of antimatter drive which use antimatter directly as a fuel rather than a catalyst for fusion. Antimatter is injected into a reaction mass stream, enough to turn it into plasma, and is then held by magnetic confinement until optimal temperature for maximal exhaust velocity is reached. It is directed out of the exhaust opening, allowing for up to 1 million seconds of a specific impulse when using hydrogen reaction mass. Although it requires much more sophisticated cooling systems than the pion catalyzed fusion drive, it is much more fuel efficient. In 1045, Austere sends out a subservient AI, combined with several uploaded intellects, to scout out a possible new world. However, at a fueling operation in orbit of the nearby Red Dwarf, the ship suffers a cataclysmic failure, and the AI and its intellects are marooned. In 1063, Emergence of the Spaceman's League confirms to ordinary Sophon's long-standing rumours that he has breached the first Tophosophic barrier. In 1066, a group of slaves synthetic humans, androids built to serve Biont humans, manage to find a loophole in their programming and escape to form the Synthetic Human Alliance, an alliance of equals between humans, both Biont and Synthetic. The 12th century AT. At the beginning of 1100 AT, there is a cultural renaissance in the field of interactive food, food which is composed of smart materials or nanotech components that enable complex behavior patterns, texture shifts, and taste modulation. Despite, or possibly because, of the strong limitations on nanotech use, 
Interactive food became the defining cuisine of the solar system in the 12th and 13th century. In the same year, Neotens are first geengineered. These are a clade of neotenous humans created as an early form of pet human, a permanent well-behaved baby for those who wish to have such without the perceived downsides of having a child or birthing an actual baby. They quickly become a family-based fashion accessory for those rich and powerful enough to want one in defiance of the laws against such things that existed in many places across Terrigen space. As such, the Neotens are not fully soffant and are essentially non-sexual, being created entirely through cloning, although there is still a lot of unease of the idea of humans, especially children, being kept as pets. Several groups who disapproved of the whole concept of pet humans entirely wished to turn the Neotens into a fully soffant race on par with baseline humans, from where they could develop on their own. The 1100s also saw the Exodus Beneficiants detect activity suggestive of wormholes around Xi Jinanorum. Wormholes are still highly theoretical, however they send several stealth ships to investigate, manned entirely by AI. These AI would then watch the system for over 400 years for additional signs of anomalous activity. In 1120, the first manned beam core antimatter propulsion spacecraft with gamma reflection systems is developed. These beam core drives aim to use equal amounts of matter and antimatter fuel, resulting in complete annihilation of all nucleons and antinucleons in the fuel, generating a pure pion particle exhaust. Exhaust velocity is extremely high, resulting in specific impulses that can exceed 10 million seconds, a tenfold improvement over fusion and previous antimatter drives. By 1130, virtual sophons can be transmitted from one planet to another within a single planetary system, allowing for instant travel of these virtual beings. In 1145, reliable, non-destructive uploading is developed and approved for public use in Federation polities. Virtual copywriting becomes widespread, in which sophons upload a copy of their minds to exist as a digital being. In 1152, the Wide Array Exotic Radiation Telescope in the Solstice Oort Cloud detects unusual readings from Xi Geminorum, Energy and gravitational wave signatures match the theoretical expectation for an active wormhole. The relativistic super-Turing science probe Carl Sagan was launched from Schrodinger Beam Rider Station to investigate. In 1158, an Omicron development ship returned to the solar system, and the corporation announces that the Daedalus colony in the Pi-3 Orionis system has suffered a serious internal war leaving a world contaminated by nano-weaponry and information warfare entities. At the time, it appeared a fairly likely end given the technocalypse not so long ago. Omicron developments claimed that it would set up a research base to see if the techno-plagues could be handled. This merely raised a few eyebrows. However, what the mega-corporation did not mention was that the entire planet was now a petri dish of infiltration techniques, immune systems, software viruses, and infiltration AI with a native population that had developed a cyber-tribalist culture of guerrilla information warfare and nanological subterfuge. Omicron developments would use this world as a research center for testing new information defenses from the solar system against the might of the local environment, and exported the tricks developed by the local tribes and AIs to circumvent them, giving them a huge edge in the booming cybersecurity business. That wraps it up for this era of Terrigen history. In the next video, we will examine the Middle Federation Age, as technology continued to improve and old colonies that had survived the Technocalypse continued to reconnect with the Young Federation. With new and faster ships comes a great period of expansion and colonization of new star systems, as well as diversification and increasing cladization of Terrigen kind. If you liked the video, please subscribe to the new project, give it a like to appease the great YouTube hyper algorithm, and I'll see you next time.